Martin Gardner, October 21, 1914 to May 22, 2010, was an American popular mathematics and popular science writer with interests also encompassing scientific skepticism, micromagic, philosophy, religion, and literature especially the writings of Lewis Carroll, L. Frank Baum, and G. K. Chesterton. He is recognized as a leading authority on Lewis Carroll. The annotated Alice, which incorporated the text of Carroll's two Alice books, was his most successful work and sold over a million copies. He had a lifelong interest in magic and illusion and was regarded as one of the most important magicians of the 20th century. He was considered the doyen of American puzzlers. He was a prolific and versatile author, publishing more than 100 books. Gardner was best known for creating and sustaining interest in recreational mathematics and by extension, mathematics in general—throughout the latter half of the 20th century, principally through his "'Mathematical Games' columns. These appeared for 25 years in Scientific American, and his subsequent books collecting them. Gardner was one of the foremost anti-pseudoscience polemicists of the 20th century. His 1957 book Fads and Fallacies in the Name of Science became a classic and seminal work of the skeptical movement. In 1976 he joined with fellow skeptics to found CSICOP, an organization promoting scientific inquiry and the use of reason in examining extraordinary claims. Topic. Biography Topic. Youth and education Gardner, son of a petroleum geologist father and an educator and artist mother, grew up in and around Tulsa, Oklahoma. His lifelong interest in puzzles started in his boyhood when his father gave him a copy of Sam Lloyd's Cyclopedia of 5,000 Puzzles, Tricks and Conundrums. He attended the University of Chicago, where he earned his bachelor's degree in philosophy in 1936. Early jobs included reporter on the Tulsa Tribune, writer at the University of Chicago Office of Press Relations, and case worker in Chicago's Black Belt for the city's Relief Administration. During World War II, he served for four years in the U.S. Navy as a yeoman on board the destroyer escort USS Pope in the Atlantic. His ship was still in the Atlantic when the war came to an end with the surrender of Japan in August 1945. After the war, Gardner returned to the University of Chicago. He attended graduate school for a year there, but he did not earn an advanced degree. In 1950, he wrote an article in the Antioch Review entitled, The Hermit Scientist. It was one of Gardner's earliest articles about junk science, and in 1952 a much expanded version became his first published book, In the Name of Science, an entertaining survey of the high priests and cultists of science, past and present. Topic. Early career In the late 1940s, Gardner moved to New York City and became a writer and editor at Humpty Dumpty magazine where for eight years he wrote features and stories for it and several other children's magazines. His paper folding puzzles at that magazine led to his first work at Scientific American. 
For many decades, Gardner, his wife Charlotte, and their two sons, Jim and Tom, lived in Hastings on Hudson, New York, where he earned his living as a freelance author, publishing books with several different publishers, and also publishing hundreds of magazine and newspaper articles. Appropriately enough, given his interest in logic and mathematics, they lived on Euclid Avenue. The year 1960 saw the original edition of the best-selling book of his career, The Annotated Alice. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Retirement and Death. In 1979, Gardner retired from Scientific American and he and his wife Charlotte moved to Hendersonville, North Carolina. Gardner never really retired as an author, but continued to write math articles, sending them to the Mathematical Intelligencer, Math Horizons, the College Mathematics Journal, and Scientific American. He also revised some of his older books such as Origami, Eleusis, and the Soma Cube. Charlotte died in 2000 and two years later Gardner returned to Norman, Oklahoma, where his son, James Gardner, was a professor of education at the University of Oklahoma. He died there on May 22, 2010. An autobiography, Undiluted Hocus Pocus, the autobiography of Martin Gardner, was published posthumously. Topic influence Martin Gardner had a major impact on mathematics in the second half of the 20th century. His column was called Mathematical Games, but it was much more than that. His writing introduced many readers to real mathematics for the first time in their lives. The column lasted for 25 years and was read avidly by the generation of mathematicians and physicists who grew up in the years 1956 to 1981. It was the original inspiration for many of them to become mathematicians or scientists themselves. David Auerbach wrote, A case can be made, in purely practical terms, for Martin Gardner as one of the most influential writers of the 20th century. His popularizations of science and mathematical games in Scientific American, over the 25 years he wrote for them, might have helped create more young mathematicians and computer scientists than any other single factor prior to the advent of the personal computer. Among the wide array of mathematicians, physicists, computer scientists, philosophers, magicians, artists, writers, and other influential thinkers who inspired and were in turn inspired by Gardner are John Horton Conway, Bill Gosper, Ron Rivest, Richard K. Guy, Pete Hine, Ronald Graham, Donald Knuth, Robert Nozick, Lee Sallows, Scott Kim, M. C. Escher, Douglas Hofstadter, Roger Penrose, Ian Stewart, David A. Klarner, Benoit Mandelbrot, Elwin R. Burlkamp, Solomon W. Golam, Raymond Smullyan, James Randi, Percy Diaconis, Penn and Teller, and Ray Hyman. His admirers included such diverse people as W. H. Auden, Arthur C. Clarke, Carl Sagan, Isaac Asimov, Richard Dawkins, Stephen J. Gould, and the entire French literary group known as the Ulipo. Salvador Dali once sought him out to discuss four-dimensional hypercubes. Gardner wrote to M. C. Escher in 1961 to ask permission to use his horseman tessellation in an upcoming column about H. S. M. Coxeter. Escher replied, saying that he knew Gardner as author of the annotated Alice, which had been sent to Escher by Coxeter. The correspondence led to Gardner introducing the previously unknown Escher's art to the world. 
His writing was both broad and deep. Noam Chomsky once wrote, Martin Gardner's contribution to contemporary intellectual culture is unique, in its range, its insight, and understanding of hard questions that matter. Gardner repeatedly alerted the public and other mathematicians to recent discoveries in mathematics recreational and otherwise. In addition to introducing many first-rate puzzles and topics such as Penrose Tiles and Conway's Game of Life, he was equally adept at writing captivating columns about traditional mathematical topics such as knot theory, Fibonacci numbers, Pascal's triangle, the Mobius strip, transfinite numbers, four-dimensional space, Zeno's paradoxes, Fermat's last theorem, and the four-color problem, Martin Gardner set a new high standard for writing about mathematics. In a 2004 interview he said, I go up to calculus, and beyond that I don't understand any of the papers that are being written. I consider that that was an advantage for the type of column I was doing because I had to understand what I was writing about, and that enabled me to write in such a way that an average reader could understand what I was saying. If you are writing popularly about math, I think it's good not to know too much math, and he was fearsomely bright. John Horton Conway called him the most learned man I have ever met. Cole Mulcahy spoke for many when he said, Gardner was without doubt the best friend mathematics ever had. <laughs> Topic Mathematical Games Column For over a quarter century Gardner wrote a monthly column on the subject of recreational mathematics for Scientific American. It all began with his freestanding article on hexaflexagons which ran in the December 1956 issue. Flexagons became a bit of a fad and soon people all over New York City were making them. Jerry Peel, the saw publisher at the time, asked Gardner, is there enough similar material to this to make a regular feature? Gardner said he thought so. The January 1957 issue contained his first column, entitled Mathematical Games. Almost 300 more columns were to follow. The Mathematical Games column became the most popular feature of the magazine and was the first thing that many readers turned to. In September 1977 Scientific American acknowledged the prestige and popularity of Gardner's column by moving it from the back to the very front of the magazine. It ran from 1956 to 1981 with sporadic columns afterwards and was the first introduction of many subjects to a wider audience. Notably, ironically, Gardner had problems learning calculus and never took a mathematics course after high school. While editing Humpty Dumpty's magazine he constructed many paper folding puzzles, and this led to his interest in the flexagons invented by British mathematician Arthur H. Stone. The subsequent article he wrote on hexaflexagons led directly to the column. Gardner's son Jim once asked him what was his favorite puzzle, and Gardner answered almost immediately, the monkey and the coconuts. It had been the subject of his April 1958 Games column and in 2001 he chose to make it the first chapter of his Best of Collection, The Colossal Book of Mathematics. In the 1980s, mathematical games began to appear only irregularly. Other authors began to share the column, and the June 1986 issue saw the final installment under that title. In 1981, on Gardner's retirement from Scientific American, the column was replaced by Douglas Hofstadter's Metamagical Themas, a name that is an anagram of Mathematical Games. 
Virtually all of the game's columns were collected in book form starting in 1959 with the Scientific American Book of Mathematical Puzzles and Diversions. Over the next four decades 14 more books followed. Donald Knuth called them the canonical books. Topic Pseudoscience and skepticism Gardner was an uncompromising critic of fringe science. His book Fads and Fallacies in the Name of Science 1952, revised 1957 debunked dubious movements and theories including Fletcherism, Lamarckism, Food Fadism, Dowsing Rods, Charles Fort, Rudolf Steiner, Dianetics, The Bates Method for Improving Eyesight, Einstein Deniers, The Flat Earth Theory, The Lost Continents of Atlantis and Lemuria, Emanuel Velikovsky's Worlds in Collision, The Reincarnation of Bridie Murphy, Wilhelm Reich's Orgone Theory, The Spontaneous Generation of Life, Extrasensory Perception and psychokinesis, homeopathy, phrenology, palmistry, graphology, and numerology. This book and his subsequent efforts Science, Good, Bad and Bogus, 1981, Order and Surprise, 1983, Gardner's Whys and Wherefores, 1989, etc. earned him a wealth of antagonists in fringe science and New Age philosophy. He kept up running dialogues both public and private with many of them for decades, in a review of Science, Good, Bad and bogus, Stephen J. Gould called Gardner the quack detector, a writer who expunged d nonsense and in so doing had become a priceless national resource. In 1976 Gardner joined with fellow skeptics philosopher Paul Kurtz, psychologist Ray Hyman, sociologist Marcelo Trutzi, and stage magician James Randi to found the Committee for the Scientific Investment investigation of claims of the paranormal now called the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Luminaries such as astronomer Carl Sagan, author and biochemist Isaac Asimov, psychologist B. F. Skinner, and journalist Philip J. Class became fellows of the program. From 1983 to 2002 he wrote a monthly column called Notes of a Fringe Watcher originally Notes of a Psy Watcher for Skeptical Inquirer, that organization's monthly magazine. These columns have been collected in five books starting with The New Age, Notes of a Fringe Watcher in 1988. Gardner was a relentless critic of self-proclaimed Israeli psychic Uri Geller and wrote two satirical booklets about him in the 1970s using the pen name Uriah Fuller in which he explained how such purported psychics do their seemingly impossible feats such as mentally bending spoons and reading minds, Martin Gardner continued to criticize pseudoscience throughout his life. His targets included astrology, UFO sightings, chiropractic, vegetarianism, Madame Blavatsky, creationism, Scientology, the Laffer Curve, Christian science, and the Hutchins-Adler Great Books movement. The last thing he wrote in the spring of 2010, a month before his death, was an article excoriating the dubious medical opinions and bogus science of Oprah Winfrey, particularly her support for the thoroughly discredited theory that vaccinations cause autism. It went on to bemoan the needless deaths of children that such notions are likely to cause. Skeptical Inquirer named him one of the ten outstanding skeptics of the 20th century. In 2010 he was posthumously honored with an award for his contributions in the skeptical field from the Independent Investigations Group. 
In 1982 the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry awarded Gardner its In Praise of Reason Award for his heroic efforts in defense of reason and the dignity of the skeptical attitude, and in 2011 it added Gardner to its pantheon of skeptics. Topic. Magic Martin Gardner's father once showed him a magic trick when he was a little boy. Young Martin was fascinated to see physical laws seemingly violated and this led to a lifelong passion for magic and illusion. He wrote for a magic magazine in high school and worked in a department store demonstrating magic tricks while he was at the University of Chicago. The very first thing that Martin Gardner ever published at the age of 15 was a magic trick in The Sphinx, the official magazine of the Society of American Magicians. He focused mainly on micromagic, table or close-up magic, and, from the 1930s on, published a significant number of original contributions to this secretive field. Magician Joe M. Turner said, The Encyclopedia of Impromptu Magic, which Gardner wrote in 1985, is guaranteed to show up in any poll of magicians' favorite magic books. His first magic book for the general public, Mathematics, Magic and Mystery Dover, 1956, is still considered a classic in the field. He was well known for his innovative tapping and spelling effects, with and without playing cards, and was most proud of the effect he called the wink change. Many of Gardner's lifelong friends were magicians. These included William Simon who introduced Gardner to Charlotte Greenwald, whom he married in 1952, fellow CSICOP founder and pseudoscience fighter James Randi, Di Vernon, Jerry Andrus, statistician Percy Diaconis, and polymath Raymond Smullyan. Diaconis and Smullyan like Gardner straddled the two worlds of mathematics and magic. Mathematics and magic were frequently intertwined in Gardner's work. One of his earliest books, Mathematics, Magic and Mystery 1956, was about mathematically based magic tricks. Mathematical magic tricks were often featured in his Mathematical Games. Column for example, his August 1962 column was titled a variety of diverting tricks collected at a factitious convention of magicians." From 1998 to 2002 he wrote a monthly column on magic tricks called, Trick of the Month. In The Physics Teacher, a journal published by the American Association of Physics Teachers, in 1999 Magic Magazine named Gardner one of the 100 Most Influential Magicians of the 20th Century. In 2005 he received a Lifetime Achievement Fellowship from the Academy of Magical Arts. The last work to be published during his lifetime was a magic trick in the May 2010 issue of Word Ways, the Journal of Recreational Linguistics. Theism and religion Gardner believed in a personal God, in an afterlife, and in prayer, but rejected established religion. He considered himself a philosophical theist and a fideist. He had an abiding fascination with religious belief but was critical of organized religion. In his autobiography, he stated, When many of my fans discovered that I believed in God and even hoped for an afterlife, they were shocked and dismayed. 
I do not mean the God of the Bible, especially the God of the Old Testament, or any other book that claims to be divinely inspired. For me God is a holy other, transcendent intelligence, impossible for us to understand. He or she is somehow responsible for our universe and capable of providing, how I have no inkling, an afterlife." Gardner described his own belief as philosophical theism inspired by the works of philosopher Miguel de Unamuno. While eschewing systematic religious doctrine, he retained a belief in God, asserting that this belief cannot be confirmed or disconfirmed by reason or science. At the same time, he was skeptical of claims that any God has communicated with human beings through spoken or telepathic revelation or through miracles in the natural world. Gardner has been quoted as saying that he regarded parapsychology and other research into the paranormal as tantamount to tempting God and seeking signs and wonders. He stated that while he would expect tests on the efficacy of prayers to be negative, he would not rule out a priori the possibility that as yet unknown paranormal forces may allow prayers to influence the physical world. Gardner wrote repeatedly about what public figures such as Robert Maynard Hutchins, Mortimer Adler, and William F. Buckley Jr. believed and whether their beliefs were logically consistent. In some cases, he attacked prominent religious figures such as Mary Baker Eddy on the grounds that their claims are unsupportable. His semi-autobiographical novel The Flight of Peter Frum depicts a traditionally Protestant Christian man struggling with his faith, examining 20th-century scholarship and intellectual movements and ultimately rejecting Christianity while remaining a theist. Gardner said that he suspected that the fundamental nature of human consciousness may not be knowable or discoverable, unless perhaps a physics more more profound than underlying quantum mechanics as some day developed. In this regard, he said, he was an adherent of the new Mysterianism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Annotated works. Gardner was considered a leading authority on Lewis Carroll. His annotated version of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, explaining the many mathematical riddles, wordplay, and literary references found in the Alice books, was first published as the annotated Alice Clarkson Potter, 1960. Sequels were published with new annotations as more annotated Alice Random House, 1990, and finally as the annotated Alice, the definitive edition Norton, 1999, combining notes from the earlier editions and new material. The original book arose when Gardner found the Alice books. Sort of frightening when he was young, but found them fascinating as an adult. He felt that someone ought to annotate them, and suggested to a publisher that Bertrand Russell be asked. When the publisher was unable to get past Russell's secretary, Gardner was asked to take on the project himself, in addition to the Alice. Books, Gardner produced annotated editions of G. K. Chesterton's The Innocence of Father Brown and The Man Who Was Thursday, as well as of celebrated poems including The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, Casey at the Bat, The Night Before Christmas, and The Hunting of the Snark, the last was also written by Lewis Carroll. Novels and short stories Gardner wrote two novels. 
He was a perennial fan of the Oz books written by L. Frank Baum, and in 1988 he published Visitors from Oz, based on the characters in Baum's various Oz books. Gardner was a founding member of the International Wizard of Oz Club, and winner of its 1971 L. Frank Baum Memorial Award. His other novel was The Flight of Peter Frum, 1973, which reflected his lifelong fascination with religious belief and the problem of faith. His short stories were collected in The No Sided Professor and Other Tales of Fantasy, Humor, Mystery, and Philosophy. 1987. Autobiography At the age of 95 Gardner wrote Undiluted Hocus Pocus, the autobiography of Martin Gardner. He was living in a one-room apartment in Norman, Oklahoma and, as was his custom, wrote it on a typewriter and edited it using scissors and rubber cement. He took the title from a Grook by his good friend Pete Hine, a Grook which perfectly expresses Gardner's abiding sense of mystery and wonder about existence. <laughs> <laughs> Word play Gardner's interest in wordplay led him to conceive of a magazine on recreational linguistics. In 1967 he pitched the idea to Greenwood Periodicals and nominated Dmitry Borgman as editor. The resulting journal, Word Ways, carried many of his articles, as of 2013 it was still publishing his submissions posthumously. He also wrote a ''Puzzle Tale'' column for Asimov's science fiction magazine from 1977 to 1986. Gardner was a member of the all-male literary banqueting club, the Trap Door Spiders, which served as the basis of Isaac Asimov's fictional group of mystery solvers, the Black Widowers. Topic. Pen names Gardner often used pen names. In 1952, while working for the children's magazine Humpty Dumpty, he contributed stories written by Humpty Dumpty JNR. For several years starting in 1953 he was a managing editor of Polly Pigtails, a magazine for young girls, and also wrote under that name. His annotated Casey at the Bat 1967 included a parody of the poem, attributed to Nitrum Rendrag, his name spelled backwards, using the pen name Uriah Fuller. He wrote two books attacking the alleged psychic Uri Geller. In later years, Gardner often wrote parodies of his favorite poems under the name Armand T. Ringer, an anagram of his name. In 1983 one George Groth panned Gardner's book The Wise of a Philosophical Scrivener in the New York Review of Books. Only in the last line of the review was it revealed that George Groth was Martin Gardner himself. In his January 1960 Mathematical Games column, Gardner introduced the fictitious Dr. Matrix and wrote about him often over the next two decades. Dr. Matrix was not exactly a pen name, although Gardner did pretend that everything in these columns came from the fertile mind of the good doctor. Then in 1979 Dr. Matrix himself published an article in the quite respectable two-year college mathematics journal. It was called Martin Gardner, defending the honor of the human mind and contained a biography of Gardner and a history of his mathematical games column. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Philosophy of Mathematics. Gardner was known for his sometimes controversial philosophy of mathematics. He wrote negative reviews of the mathematical experience by Philip J. Davis and Reuben Hirsch and What is Mathematics, Really? by Hirsch, both of which were critical of aspects of mathematical Platonism, and the first of which was well received by the mathematical community. While Gardner was often perceived as a hardcore Platonist, his reviews demonstrated some formalist tendencies. Gardner maintained that his views are widespread among mathematicians, but Hirsch has countered that in his experience as a professional mathematician and speaker, this is not the case. Topic. Other views Over the years Gardner held forth on many contemporary issues, arguing for his points of view in fields from general semantics to fuzzy logic to watching TV he once wrote a negative review of Jerry Mander's book Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television. He was a frequent contributor to the New York Review of Books. His philosophical views are described and defended in his book The Wise of a Philosophical Scrivener, 1983, revised 1999. Topic legacy and awards The numerous awards Gardner received include, 1987 Leroy P. Steele Prize for his many books and articles on mathematics 1971 L. Frank Baum Memorial Award from the International Wizard of Oz Club 1980 The Main Belt Asteroid 2587 Gardner discovered by Edward L. G. Bowell at Anderson Mesa Station is named after Martin Gardner. 1990 Allendorfer Award, along with Fan Chung and Ronald Graham, from the Mathematical Association of America, MA. 1994 JPBM Communications Award from the Joint Policy Board for Mathematics. 1997 became a Fellow, Class Humanities and Arts Section Literature of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. 1998. Trevor Evans Award from the MA 1999 listed in the 100 Most Influential Magicians of the 20th Century by Magic Magazine. 2011 Houdini Hall of Honor Award posthumous from the Independent Investigations Group the Mathematical Associating of America has established a Martin Gardner lecture to be given each year on the last day of MA Math Fest, the summer meeting of the MA. The first annual lecture will be given by Eric Demain of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology on Saturday, August 3, 2019, at MathFest in Cincinnati. There are eight bricks honoring Gardner in the Paul R. Halmos Commemorative Walk, installed by the Mathematical Association of America at their conference center in Washington, D.C. Topic. Gathering for Gardner Martin Gardner continued to write up until his death in 2010, and his community of fans grew to span several generations. Moreover, his influence was so broad that many of his fans had little or no contact with each other. This led Atlanta entrepreneur and puzzle collector Tom Rogers to the idea of hosting a weekend gathering celebrating Gardner's contributions to recreational mathematics, rationality, magic, puzzles, literature, and philosophy. Although Gardner was famously shy, and would usually decline an honor if it required him to make a personal appearance, Rogers persuaded him to attend the first such gathering for Gardner 
G4G, held in Atlanta in January 1993, a second such get together was held in 1996, again with Gardner in attendance, and this led Rogers and his friends to make the gathering a regular, bi annual event. Participants over the years have ranged from longtime Gardner friends such as Conway, Elwyn Burrell Camp, Ronald Graham, Donald Coxeter, and Richard Guy, to newcomers like mathematician and mathematical artist Eric Demain and mathematical video maker V. Hart. The program at the G4G meetings presents topics which Gardner had written about. The first gathering in 1993 was G4G1 and the 1996 event was G4G2. Since then it has been in even-numbered years, so far always in Atlanta. The 2018 event was G4G13.